So earlier this month, CBRE released their Q3 2020 cap rate survey, which tracked cap rates for third quarter transactions among all major product types across the US. And this information was put together by CBRE investment and valuation professionals at the end of August and tracked cap rate data based on recent property transactions in the 30 major markets studied and also investor sentiment regarding where cap rates will go in the future in those markets across office, retail, multifamily, and industrial properties. And with so much happening in the markets this year and with some surprising findings in the report, in this video, what I wanted to do is break down exactly what CBRE's findings were in the survey, what that research might be telling us, and what this all might mean for you as a real estate investor and or real estate professional going forward. So in this video, we're going to break down what's going on with cap rates right now, according to CBRE data, where they might go in the future, and the why behind these data points that might not be so obvious at first glance. Hey, this is Justin for breaking to CRE.com. And if you're new here on this channel, we talk about real estate investing careers and real estate investment analysis. So if you're looking to break into the industry or do your first or next commercial real estate deal, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos as soon as they're released. So let's start this off with the basics here. This report tracked stabilized properties and measured cap rates, which are calculated by taking the property's net operating income or NOI and dividing that by the acquisition price of the property. And the data was broken down by product type and geographic location, measuring cap rates across office, retail, multifamily, and industrial properties across 30 major markets. So based on the findings of this report, what does this research tell us and what can we take away from this report in general? Well, to start out the survey, CBRE walked through how cap rates have changed since the second half of 2019, broken down by product type. So to start this off, let's talk about how cap rates have changed by product type over the past year, starting with office properties first. Now CBRE split this data up for office properties between two different sectors. They looked at CBD or central business district office cap rates and also suburban office cap rates as well. But cap rates moved in the same direction in both CBD and suburban properties in almost every single market across the board. But what was surprising about the office data in the report was that even with all the news of work from home becoming more permanent and people fleeing large, more expensive metros for smaller, less expensive areas, recent office trades have actually showed that office investors are taking somewhat of a contrarian approach to the mainstream media's thought process with cap rates staying static or even decreasing in the most expensive gateway markets across the country. In fact, lower cost tax-friendly cities like Atlanta, Austin, Charlotte, Denver, and Nashville all actually saw cap rates increase over the last year, decreasing property values comparative to NOI values, while expensive coastal cities like Oakland, San Jose, New York City, and Miami all saw slight cap rate decreases from a year ago, increasing property values comparative to NOI values from just one year ago. So while the media is talking about companies leaving big cities and people working remotely for good, office investors seem to be making bets on office coming back stronger than ever in these major markets, with major metros seeing a slight drop in cap rates, and even a city under as much scrutiny as New York City seeing office properties trade at cap rates of 4.25% to 4.5% over the summer, down a full 25 basis points from one year prior. And at the same time, smaller secondary markets saw a slight increase in cap rates, with Nashville, for example, seeing office cap rates between 6.5% and 7% this summer, which is up a full 50 basis points from cap rates in the second half of 2019. And this was definitely surprising to me, considering all of the articles making the news lately citing the death of New York City and San Francisco residents leaving at record rates, but office investors are clearly thinking the opposite based on transaction data in the third quarter of 2020. Now the results on office deals were surprising, but that only tells one piece of the story. So what's happening with other product types in those same markets right now? Well, next up, the report covered multifamily transactions, which unlike office properties, performed very similarly to what you'd expect, 
based on those same news articles citing the exodus from major US cities this year. So consistent with popular belief, low cost cities like Atlanta, Nashville, and Tampa saw cap rate decreases indicating investors valued properties at higher values relative to their projected year one NOI and higher cost areas like San Jose, New York City, and Seattle all saw cap rate increases for apartment projects indicating that investors valued properties at lower values relative to their projected year one NOI. So even though office investors appear to be banking on in-office jobs staying in major metros, multifamily investors appear to be making that bet that remote work is going to give people the opportunity to be more location independent in the short term, resulting in a continued population shift to secondary markets and smaller cities over the next one to three years at least. Now from the apartment space, CBRE moved on to industrial and the data here was again no surprise at all with the huge rise in e-commerce we've all seen in 2020. This was the only product type in the report where not a single market tracked in the analysis saw a cap rate increase and metros like Atlanta, Boston, Chicago, Nashville, and Phoenix all actually saw cap rate decreases from H2 2019. And just as industrial demand has risen due to the rise of e-commerce, retail has also taken a hit in most markets as a result, and the data in the report showed that as well. Now, it's important to note that only Class A grocery-anchored retail centers were tracked in the report, which have definitely been hit less hard this year than other non-necessity-based retail like regional malls and strip centers, but even so, 14 of the 29 markets tracked in the analysis saw cap rates increase over the last year, while only five markets saw cap rates decrease for grocery anchored retail deals. Now, even though we saw some mixed data points from trades that have occurred this year, there does appear to be a consensus around a cap rate outlook throughout the rest of this year for each product type in the analysis. So for both CBD and suburban office properties, the survey reported that cap rates were expected to either stay the same or increase in all markets tracked with cap rate expansion or increases projected in 13 of the 30 markets studied. Now on the multifamily side, for both infill and suburban product, multifamily cap rates were expected to either stay the same or decrease in all markets tracked, with the exception of the coastal California markets of San Jose and San Diego, but cap rate compression or decreases were expected in only six of the 30 markets tracked for this product type. And for industrial, cap rates were projected to remain static in all markets across the board, with the exception of Austin and Boston, both of which were expected to see cap rates decrease throughout the rest of the year as demand continues to increase for industrial space. And for grocery anchored retail, cap rates in all markets were expected to stay the same or increase throughout the rest of 2020, with 10 of the 30 markets in the study expected to see cap rates continue to tick upwards by the end of the year. So this is all great information and definitely gives us a helpful pulse on the market, but overall, what does this tell us and how can we use this information as real estate investors trying to make investment decisions throughout the rest of this year and into 2021? Well, first off, even though there has been significant distress in certain product types among stabilized deals, this data is showing us that prices have really yet to fall off a cliff, even for product types with the most uncertainty swirling around them, specifically office and retail deals. Now this report did only survey stabilized properties and distressed assets likely paint a different picture, but even for retail and office properties with uncertain futures ahead of them, property owners appear to be bullish on the leasing prospects for their properties and their ability to bounce back in 2021 and beyond. However, on that same note, it's also important to note that even though cap rates haven't adjusted more than about 25 to 50 basis points for most product types in most markets, this doesn't necessarily mean that values aren't dropping across the country even without significant cap rate expansion or increases in most markets. According to the report, 50% of investors are underwriting flat rent growth or lower effective rent levels for new leases. 49% of investors surveyed are underwriting higher vacancy factors as a result of space taking longer to lease. 49% of investors are also underwriting greater collection loss from tenants who can't pay rent. And 31% of investors are underwriting higher vacancies 
due to tenant bankruptcies. And because that cap rate value represents the projected NOI divided by the purchase price, lower effective releasing rent scenarios, higher vacancies, and higher collection loss overall lead to lower NOI values being underwritten by buyers, meaning that even if cap rates stayed the same in many markets, if underwritten NOI values have decreased, that means that overall property values in those markets have also decreased as well. And finally, it's also important to note that with interest rates at record lows for commercial real estate loans in the US, cap rates have likely seen additional compression in the markets due to extremely cheap money, allowing investors to hit their target returns even at lower cap rate values. So even with so much uncertainty in the market and much more conservative underwriting as a result, many investors are locking in long-term debt in the low 3% range on stabilized deals. And if you throw in an interest-only period into the mix for a few years or even the entire loan term, many investors can still underwrite to return targets at Q1 cap rate values even while underwriting non-existent or negative rent growth values and increased vacancy assumptions over the next 12 to 24 months. So overall, as has been the case since March, investors as a whole are still just trying to figure everything out and buyers and sellers are still trying to decide what is true market pricing for deals today across all commercial real estate product types. But with underwriting assumptions starting to change for many buyers across product types, whole dollar valuations appear to be dropping slightly in many product types and many markets, but historically low interest rates have likely kept cap rates down despite the additional risk that commercial real estate investors are taking on by investing in a very uncertain market today. Now, putting all of this information together can get really confusing if you let it, but to make this all mean something, these cap rate changes and underwriting modifications really need to all be added into a real estate financial model to see the impact of everything going on in the market today. And if you're watching this video and you're looking to make a real estate investment by the end of this year or in 2021 and want to learn how to integrate these things like market rent decreases, increased vacancy rates, or a cap rate sensitivity analysis into an underwriting and valuation of commercial real estate deals you're considering investing in, I definitely recommend taking a look at Break Into CRE Academy, which is going to give you instant access to all Break Into CRE courses on real estate financial modeling and analysis, done for you acquisition models and templates for the main four commercial product types we talked about in this video, and some additional one-on-one support from me directly to help you navigate that next step in your career. And if you're in the industry right now, let me know in the comments below where you've seen cap rates go in your market this year and where you see those going throughout the rest of this year and into 2021. So as always, make sure to hit the like button to let me know if you like this video and wanna see more content on market analysis and what's going on in the market today. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.